Okay guys, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the builder pattern. So the builder pattern, you are definitely familiar with it if you worked with Android development before. Basically, a builder is used when we have multiple parameters to initiate. And you are definitely familiar with it because it is used in the Android system um, quite extensively, okay? So for example, when we are building an alert dialog, okay? then we have a builder object that we can use to set various properties of that alert dialog, okay? You don't have to set all the properties, you just set the ones that you are uh, interested in, but you will use that builder in order to create your alert dialog, okay? So um, it is used by many developers, obviously uh, by anyone who uses the Android system because they implement it quite extensively but they, it is implemented by few developers. Not many people actually use it in their code, even though it's a very, very useful pattern. So what does Builder do basically? So it is uh, useful when we have many parameters of a class, okay? When we need to instantiate a class with multiple parameters, some of which are optional, okay? So we don't have to provide all of the parameters. Uh, some of them are optional. Um, then it is very useful because we don't have to build all the uh, possibilities of constructors, okay? So you might want to, uh, let's say you have five or six parameters, then if some of those are optional, then you would want to build all the constructors possible to allow the users to uh, build your class in different shapes or forms, okay? So if, for instance, you have five parameters, in combination, that will give you about 120 constructors. So obviously that is impractical. Now Kotlin does solve this problem partially uh, with named parameters. So you could give named uh, names to your parameters and pass them like that, right? You don't necessarily need to have all the constructors available. However, the problem with this solution is that it doesn't really work with Java code. And as we know, Kotlin is based on Java, okay? It runs on the JVM. So that means um, if you are working with any software that is done in Java, then you will not be able to use these this functionality with the named parameters. So obviously the builder pattern is very useful here because it allows us to bypass naming parameters and um, build our class with optional parameters. Okay, so optional parameters. Now, uh, here is a pseudocode of how you would implement the builder pattern. This, if you copy this and put it in your code, this might not work, but we will, uh, after we look at this, we will go to Android Studio and we will implement a functional um, piece of code there. So here we have, let's say a component, you can think about this as a dialogue or whatever other component you might need that let's say has three parameters, right? Right. Parameter one, two, and three. Now the builder is going to be a subclass, right? So we can create a class here that has the same three parameters that your component has, but the builder allows us to set them separately independently, right? So it allows us to have set parameter one, set parameter two and set parameter three. Now the important method here is the build, okay? The build method allows us to give the caller a instance of the component. You can have a look here at the top, the component has a private constructor, okay? So we cannot instantiate the, the component by itself. We have to pass through the builder and the builder through the build method. This is optional, this is obviously optional, but the name is uh, more or less standardized by convention, right? So dot build will build you the uh, actual component. So this will give you an instance. Now in the component, when we initiate, okay, when we call this component of this, this being the builder, then we need to update the values of the parameters in this way, right? So we need to pass the actual values that were given to us by the user. Okay, so let's have a look in Android Studio and create a builder pattern for us. So let's go ahead and right click new Kotlin file. And here I'm going to call this builder. I'm going to create a class component. 
Okay, I'm going to make the constructor private. So private constructor builder colon builder. Okay. Um, we haven't created the builder yet, so don't import it. Now, let's define our parameter. So var param1 is going to be a type of string nullable. Var param2 also, or rather, let's put this in int. And var param3 is going to be maybe a boolean. Okay, and let's create a class builder. All right, so that solves our problem here. Now, uh, this is the builder. This must be initialized, so I'm going to say null. This is going to be null as well. And this one too. Okay, so we have our class builder. Then the builder must have the same parameters. However, I'm going to make them private. So private var param1 is a string and null by default. Private var param2 is an int and null by default. And private var param3 is a boolean and null by default. Okay, so we have our parameters. Now we need a few functions to be able to set those parameters. So first of all, fun set param1. And here we have param1 of type string. And we're going to apply this dot param1 equals param1. So the reason I use apply here is because every time I use one of these functions, I want to return the actual builder object so that we can apply more functionality to it, right? So then after that, we can chain our calls, set parameter one, set parameter two, and so on. Now, fun set param two of type int, apply this dot param two equals param two, and then same for param three. Boolean, apply this dot param three, equals param3. Okay, so these are the setters. Okay, so since these are private, we can only access param1, 2, and 3 through the setters. That is done on purpose. And then we will have fun build. That will simply return us a component of this. Okay, now we will also need getters, but I will show you first why we need getters. So here, outside of the builder class, but inside the component class, we will have an init function, param1 equals builder dot. Now, since we don't have access to param1, then we will need a getter for param1 in order to be able to set it here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the getter get param1 and that will simply give us param1 and let's duplicate that param2 and 3 exactly the same 2 and 3. So builder that we are passing here in the constructor builder dot get param1 okay duplicate that command or control d to duplicate param2 and param3. Okay, so these are, uh, this is the structure of our component. So now let's go ahead and initiate, instantiate our component. And obviously I'm going to do that in a test class. So class component test. Here I have at test fun builder test. Okay, and then let's create a component. So val component is going to be component. You will notice that I cannot instantiate it here because the constructor is private. So I'm forced to use a builder. Okay, instantiate the builder dot. And here I have the option to set parameters. So set param1 some value 
dot set param three true. Okay, the parameters are optional, so I don't have to call parameter two. However, I do have to call the dot build method. Okay, and since I have the build, that will give me the component itself. And now I can do some tests. So assertions, make sure you select the assert j1 dot assert that component dot param one is equal to uh, what is that some value and then assertions dot assert that component dot param two uh, sorry param three is equal to uh, true and we can also test actually param two as well so for param two is equal to null okay so that is going to be null by default here okay so that's it let's go ahead and run the code and try out our uh, pattern all right there we go so we have our uh, builder test has completed. We can also go ahead and print some values. So print line um, component dot param one, print line component dot param three, and we can print line component. All right, so let's go ahead and run that again that should give us some printout. So component with its ID, the value and true. Okay, so you can see how we set the parameters on the builder and we use the builder to provide various functionality here. All of these parameters are optional and then we have our component who has all the correct values. So that is all for the builder pattern.